Now, the CEO of the newly launched Nova Merchant Bank, Chinedu Ikudima, says the evolution of banking regulations, which gave rise to universal banks performing the roles of merchant banks, led to the death of merchant banking operations in the country. I caught up with him at the launch of the bank to discuss its role in the merchant banking space in Nigeria. Take a look. Most banks took up the universal banking uh, license and became universal banks, so they became omnibus banks providing all of the services or trying to provide all of those services within that umbrella. But then you had the scenario of the global uh, economic crisis that played out between 2008, 2009, 2010, which led to the collapse of various banks internationally, led to a better understanding of the types of risks some of the transactions uh, uh, involved and the kinds of exposures that were involved. And in some cases, they led to a scenario where you couldn't even estimate some of the exposures in some of the transactions, like derivatives transactions and co. So it now led to another rethinking of the regulatory environment in many markets. So most regulators then came up with a decision to separate classic commercial banking activities and what you may describe as merchant banking, investment banking activities. Nigeria was one of those markets where you saw a lot of banks were compelled to either create holding companies or, or divest of various businesses. Some banks had like insurance and you know, wealth management and all kinds of things within the operation. They were forced to divest some of those. And, and, and that's what you saw happen. And in tandem with that, in 2013, the central bank uh, again started issuing merchant banking license. It defined new new regulatory guidance for that. And that's why, because actually the new generation of merchant banks actually maybe four and a half years old in, term, in that context. So you saw some of the existing like discount houses convert to merchant banks. I think the one that came new was something like RAND that came new into that market. We are, uh, but then RAND is a subsidiary of uh, a relatively large African banking corporation. So you can say that Nova, beyond being new, is, would I say, the first new built Nigerian uh, 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 merchant bank. So how does that change things within the space now? Nova is on the scene now. What changes? Oh, well, uh, I think the key thing there is we are new and fresh. We don't have legacy challenges to deal with. Okay? I mean, if I was doing a certain type of business, I would tend to hire, with no, with no disrespect, I would tend to hire people who are good in that business. If I were to change my business into something else, it's either I have to fully change my staff, which is often not practicable, or I have to go through a transition phase of trying to morph into the new uh, institutional structure that I seek. We don't have that challenge. We are able to create the institution we think is necessary for this market now. Okay, speaking about creating, what are the specific products on offer to customers? Uh, we are a full service merchant bank. So I'll speak first to the wholesale banking side. So the classic wholesale banking, I mean, you have to realize that, for example, for a merchant bank, they cannot take deposits less than 50 million naira, for example, unlike maybe commercial banks, which can take 10 naira, whatever. Not that, that is, you have to understand that the key thing in banking is the capacity to aggregate. So you sh people shouldn't relate the fact that you take large deposits to maybe then that means you will get a lot of money. You have to work for that. Actually, you can get a lot more money by taking small deposits. It's just your capacity to aggregate. So I just want to, to make that illustration. But the key thing there is what you see is a, a NOVA, for example, the way, we, the way we are looking to get, launch our organization, in the wholesale banking space, we'll be offering the classic products plus extras. We'll seek to use technology to improve the experience of customers in the way they experience maybe trade finance or, or, or lending or the classic with the derivatives transactions and all that stuff. That is one of the things that we'll seek to do in that space. The other thing that we'll do is that we are going to work with customers to fully comprehend what their circumstances are. And if you look at the banking system in Nigeria today, you see there are a lot of strains around non-performing loans and stuff like that. With no disrespect intended, some of the, if you look closely at the risk management around some of those loans, 
you can have very serious questions around them. So for us, for example, we'll be working with customers to ensure that they are engaging with their banking, financial services needs and solutions in a way that is sustainable. So from a credit risk perspective, risk management, customers have nothing to fear. You have, oh, you have that taken care of. I'll, I'll give you an example. I used to be executive director for risk management for Citibank Nigeria. And with no modesty intended, when I left the job, my NPL ratio was zero. It was the only bank in this market which had NPL of zero. Okay, it's not all my work or something, it's the work of my colleagues in the bank, it's my work of course, the work of my team. But it involved a certain capacity to, to envision the future, a capacity to be able to engage with customers and enable them to see what really works for them. Sometimes the customer will see something and say, I want that, or oh, by the way, I want that. And I want. It's up to you to say, okay, this works for you. However, this one, you may have it now, but in, in, in two years' time, you know, unless you do A, B, C, and D to hedge your risk, this will become a challenge for you. I mean, you had some, some customers in the market who took foreign currency loans without any kinds of hedges, okay? So when there was, and, the, and most of their revenues were, were in local currency. So when there was a devaluation, they had a situation where their local currency capacity was not adequate to meet their foreign currency obligations. Actually, in some cases, they couldn't even source the foreign currency. So I think it's up to you as a banker to bring up those questions, not just to seek to do something because the customer says he wants it, to say, look, I think it works better for you with this. It may mean the customer won't make as much profit as he was hoping for now, but it does mean he can focus on building his business, knowing the risks he's taking, and those risks are covered, than almost gambling okay. and hoping that things will turn out as he expects. Now, one of the advantages of a merchant bank is that they provide long-term funding with, you know, against the bank to give short term. But uh, it's been said that um, for NOVA, long, from a long term funding perspective, you will be looking outside Nigeria. Can you explain that? Well, what you see is, you know, long term funding can come in the form of either equity or debt, okay? And uh, if you look at the experience of uh, some entities in Nigeria which have maybe issued euro bonds, Okay, which is some form of long-term financing in, in foreign currency, of course. You see that, you see there's a huge appetite by foreign investors in Nigerian assets. Despite all the negative stories you hear sometimes, all oh, this, uh, politics, the economy, and co. You had almost every issue, including the federal government of Nigeria's Eurobond issues, would be like six times, five times oversubscribed. That is a signal that there are pools of funds internationally which are seeking yield and which are prepared to take the risk in this continent, in this market. If you can provide them the structure and the comfort to be able to do that. Now, beyond uh, whether euro bonds or something, there are actually private investors who are also in the same space. The, what we'll bring to the table is connectivity because you know, a lot of the things you do in merchant banking is actually access and connectivity. Is that you know the people who can provide a service, you can intermediate the transaction by bringing those who are in need with those who have, who have the resources and taking them to a solution. 